Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Uh, today's case is a sequel. Uh, it involves the same patient featured in the uh, stent embolization video. It is now two years later, and this time, uh, this unfortunate patient had an acute lima occlusion uh, during PCA of the LED via the lima graft. So the patient is now 67 years old. As you might recall, he had a three vessel cabbage uh, followed by PCI of the LED via the lima. Two years ago, uh, he had PCI of the lima uh, that was complicated by a stent embolization. He now uh, presents with a renewed chest pain and rolled in for a non-STEMI uh, with a troponin of 9.5 nanograms per mil. His EF, uh, which had improved to 60% one year ago, is now 45 to 50% uh, with severe enteroapical hypokinesis. On cath, his uh, native arteries are now all occluded. Uh, both vein grafts are patent, and the uh, lima to the LED is shown here. So what we see is that the uh, previously placed stents in the lima uh, are uh, all widely patent. Uh, the lima is very torturous, and we already know that we'll have difficulty wiring and passing equipment, and we went over how to deal with all this in the stent embolization video. We also see that there is a severe instant restenosis in the mid-LED, and that flow to the apical LED is severely compromised. And unfortunately, the LED lesion is pretty far to reach, especially with the long torturous lima. So uh, is our balloon or a stent catheter uh, going to be able to reach it? So occasionally during PCI of a native artery via a long torturous graft, uh, you might find yourself in a situation where your balloon or stent catheter shaft is simply too short to reach the lesion. So what do you do? Uh, there are three possible solutions. The first and easiest is to simply reach a, for a, a shorter guide catheter, and most of the standard shapes are available in 90 centimeter lengths. Uh, if you don't have a short guide catheter in the right shape, then another solution is to reach for a shorter Y connector valve. Uh, this will buy you a couple of uh, centimeters. For example, you can use the cap of a uh, Turomo destination sheath, uh, which is shown here. Uh, this is an extremely short white connector valve, but you do have to be careful not to entrain air uh, during uh, exchanges of equipment uh, because this valve does not easily bleed back uh, via its uh, hemostatic cap. Uh, you'll have to bleed back via the side port. Um, if you need more than just a couple of centimeters, uh, the other option is to shorten your guide catheter. So how do you shorten a guide catheter? Well, uh, you'll need a few things. Uh, first, uh, you'll need the guide catheter that you want to shorten. Uh, we'll use a six French guide and ex as an example. And you'll need the dilator, the six French dilator uh, that came with the sheath. Uh, second, uh, you'll uh, need a sheath one size smaller uh, than your guide catheter. In our example, we'll need a five French sheath since we have a six French guide. Third, uh, you'll need a dilator one size larger than your guide catheter. In our example, we'll need a seven French dilator. And fourth, uh, you'll need a pair of sharp scissors. So in step one, um, cut your six French guide catheter and remove the extra segment. Use your six French dilator to round up the lumen at the cut ends of the two parts of the cut guide catheter. In step two, uh, cut off a segment uh, from the five French sheath. Uh, you'll need this sheath segment to join the two parts of the cut guide. Use the seven French dilator to flare both ends of the five French sheath segment. And in step three, uh, insert the two parts of the cut six French guide catheter into the five French sheath segment. The fit will already be quite snug, uh, but obviously torqueability will still be limited. Taping the segments together uh, will improve torqueability a little bit and reduce the chance that the catheter uh, will detach uh, during PCI. All right, so in our case, uh, we found that we had enough reach uh, using the cap of a Turumo destination sheath. Uh, we passed a pro water wire fairly easily uh, down the lima and uh, into the distal LED. And balloons uh, pass pretty easily as well and uh, we dilated the LED with both uh, compliant and uh, scoring balloons. 
Um, it was a long segment of disease in the LED, so we thought we needed two stents. Um, the first stent, a 2.5 by 28 millimeter DS, uh, passed easily and was uh, deployed in the mid LED. We next tried to pass a second 2.5 by 28 millimeter DS, and to our surprise, uh, this gave us trouble. Even though the first stent uh, went by without any problems, the second stent uh, got stuck in the mid lima and seemed to be blocked by the prior stent from two years ago. And there was very limited pushability uh, due to the tortuosity of the lima. Uh, we tried a buddy wire, uh, but still no luck. Uh, we uh, tried a guide liner, and with a lot of effort, a deep throated guide liner and some elbow grease, uh, the second stent that eventually uh, passed and was uh, deployed in the LAD. And in retrospect, uh, it is possible that the first stent could have snagged a uh, strut uh, from that two-year-old Lima stent and blocked passage uh, uh, from the second stent. And in any event, uh, we thought we were close to being done uh, at this point, just a little post dilation and uh, we'll be finished. Then the patient started complaining of severe chest pain. Uh, the monitor showed a dramatic uh, ST elevations. He then had a run of ET and NVF. Uh, he was actually still conscious and had to be defibrillated twice. Uh, we do an injection and find that the lima is occluded. So after a quick aspiration thrombectomy, uh, we saw that there was a lucency in the mid lima uh, probably at the section uh, where the second stent got stuck. All of our back and forth pushing of the second stent probably injured the wall of the lima. And anecdotally, I found the lima to actually be quite uh, fragile and quite susceptible to injury from wires, equipment, and uh, guideliners, much more so uh, than um, coronary arteries. We uh, gently redilated the two year old lima stent in case there was an uplifted uh, stent strut. Uh, we then tacked up the dissection in the lima uh, with a 3.0 by 38 millimeter DS, and thankfully the stent passed very easily this time. Uh, flow in the lima was restored, uh, the patient's chest pain resolved, and the ST segments normalized. Uh, there was still some uh, residual stenosis uh, in the LAD. So uh, we uh, post dilated the LED at very high pressures, uh, over 20 atmospheres, uh, with uh, 275 and 3.0 millimeter uh, NC balloons. And um, here is the uh, final angiographic result. Not perfect. Uh, there's still some uh, residual stenosis in the LED, uh, but flow was much improved. Uh, we uh, decided to declare victory at this point. The shockwave uh, IVL was not yet available at the time of this procedure, and there was no way a laser could have made it down into the LAD. Um, the patient did well. Uh, his troponin actually downtrended the next day, and he was discharged home. All right, take home messages. First, don't poke the bear. In this case, there was very little choice, uh, but be wary of a repeat PCI if you know that there was trouble in a prior attempt. Uh, Lima interventions can be especially treacherous. We also discuss what to do if your balloon or stent catheter shaft is too short to reach the lesion. Use a short uh, guide catheter, 90 centimeters, a short Y connector valve, or shorten your guide catheter. And uh, if your stent won't advance, well, you've got your standard algorithm, uh, better lesion preparation, better backup, buddy wires. But one lesson learned in this case is that it might sometimes be helpful uh, to try to figure out exactly why the stent won't advance. In this case, I think intravascular imaging could have been useful uh, to see if there was an uplifted stent strut, an uplifted plaque, or a dissection flap. Thank you for watching.